Hey everyone, and welcome to our video on simplifying instructions. But before we get started, here's a little joke for you. How do you make holy water? You boil the hell out of it. <laughs> if you were to ask a language teacher, what is the most common teaching problem you run into, the list would be as long as the day. But one thing that almost all teachers could agree on is that students have trouble understanding their instructions. And this is really a problem that everyone faces. For native teachers, we tend to speak in language that is too difficult for our students to understand. For non-native speakers, they tend to speak in their native language and lose an opportunity to use English for classroom instruction. And this problem really does come from a good place. Teachers want to share activities and assignments that are exciting and that challenge students to experiment and try new things with their language. However, they lose sight of the fact that if the language you use to explain an activity is more difficult than the language students will use, or if it takes longer to explain an activity than to do it, then it's time to go back to the drawing board. And if you've ever played Monopoly, you'll know exactly what I mean. Most people who play Monopoly simply set up the board and start rolling. They don't take the time to read the instructions because they're too long, too complicated, too difficult, and most people feel too unnecessary. And lots of times, that's how students feel about our instructions. Now once you get back to the drawing board, you're faced with a task that is easier said than done. Simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. By our very nature, Teachers are verbose. We like to elaborate. We like to hear ourselves speak. But in a classroom, when giving instructions, this isn't always the best course of action. Teachers tend to explain things the way they see them in their mind. And that's usually as a full, complete, and whole picture, from the start to the finish. Students, on the other hand, are only having this picture revealed to them piece by piece. And teachers need to remember this, that they should slow down and reveal these pieces carefully. Because this leads to an imbalance, an imbalance between the language that we teachers think in and the language that students are able to understand in. You see, we have planned our lesson. We have made the activities, we have aligned our objectives and our practices, and maybe even taught the lessons in years past. The point is that we are experts in the content and know exactly how to carry out the activities. Our students, on the other hand, are not. We need to be mindful of this when we plan our teacher talk and as we give our directions but we've got to work hard to keep activities and instructions simple. And here are a few ways that I try to do this in my classroom. Have you ever looked at the instructions for a set of Lego blocks? There's something beautiful about these type of instructions. These visual instruction plans show you step by step, clearly and with pictures, what happens in the first step what happens in the second step, and the changes that occur in between. While this step-by-step -step or point-to-point -point instruction may seem childish for some, it works. It works because it shows students what happens first, what happens next, what happens last. And if at any point in the process they find themselves lost or unsure of what happens next, they have a visual instruction plan that they can go back and look at, which you can point them to. Oftentimes, really well thought out, simplified, and clarified plans 
won't even need words. Think about your own life. Have you ever been to Ikea? Have you ever bought one of those flat brown boxes? Gotten home and looked at the instructions, only to find that there were no words? Only pictures? Well, these type of instructions work for adults and for kids. Keeping your instructions, your activities, and the things you do in class simple does not mean they have to be easy. Just be sure that you don't let a good activity get lost in bad instruction. And finally, a word from a master. The ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. And that's from Hans Hoffman.